Hey guys and welcome back to the channel, Ed Bud here. Today I'd like to discuss two shoes that I have in contention for my sub 1 hour 30 half marathon attempt later this month. Those two shoes are the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent and the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X. So I've just reached the 100 mile point in the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X. It's a really been a great trainer for me. Not only a trainer, it's kind of like a bit of a racing shoe as well. So it got me thinking, which of these two shoes would I select if I could use either one of them for a race? These are exceptionally comfortable. I find them light enough for possible racing use and they don't really leave me with that feeling like they demand too much from my body to reach those higher paces. Obviously I'm very lucky to have the option of using either the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X or perhaps one of the Nike offerings for my race. So which one am I gonna use? It's a tough decision, I've gotta be honest. This one's been keeping me up at night a little bit. I really don't know what to go for. So I started looking at some facts about all three of these shoes. They are very, very light shoes, all of them. The Vaporfly Next Percent obviously being the lightest, the Vaporfly 4% being somewhere in the middle and the Carbon X being very slightly heavier. Heel to toe drop on these varies quite considerably. There's a 10 mil drop on the Vaporfly 4%, around about eight mil on the Vaporfly Next Percent. I think there's about a six mil drop on the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X. Sometimes these things are a little bit difficult to measure. I, I don't always wanna just go by what's on a website. Sometimes I like to try and look, see if I can accurately estimate really that drop. And it's not always easy. There's a lot of foam on these shoes, as you well know if you own one of them. Something like this is really tough to actually gauge the drop, but I think I've got those pretty much right. I have to be honest, I enjoy running in all of these shoes. I don't really find the drop massively apparent, apart from on the Vaporfly 4% flying it. One thing that is slightly different about each of these three shoes, um, I don't see people talking about it too much, but it's that kind of width at the kind of mid foot, uh, four, four foot area, and also the width at the arch. So being the incredibly nerdy and sad man that I am, I've decided to do some measurements on those, and here they are. So the Vaporfly 4% flying it here, I measured around about 11.5 centimeters at the widest point in that kind of midfoot area here. Moving to the arch, that comes in around about six centimeters. The Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X, I measured this up around about 11.7 centimeters at the midfoot area here. So very, very slightly wider than the 4%. The arch is somewhat of a different story, measuring 7.5 centimeters. The old Deer's Hoof Vaporfly Next Percent. Widest point here, measured even more, 11.9 centimeters. And in the arch area, 6.3. So very slightly wider than the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. Almost fell over then. So what does this tell us? Well, certainly from my perspective, I found the Next Percent and the Carbon X slightly more forgiving in terms of that gait cycle. As your foot's coming down onto the ground, I think as my running form's improved over time, it does feel a little bit more forgiving in terms of your foot strike. The Vaporfly 4% Flyknit, a lot of people really do struggle with that shoe. They do tend to find that they really need to work on that form to get the very best out of it. I think the latest iteration of those carbon plate shoes really is a little bit more forgiving in that aspect. I know a lot of viewers have really struggled actually when they've tried out the Vaporfly 4% flying it. It really is an extremely narrow shoe. Some people that are coming from perhaps the Zoom Fly flying it really have found this to be quite a bit narrower. I mean the feeling's the same in terms of the upper but it's a very different feeling underfoot. The Carbon X is a lot more forgiving in the fact that it is far less narrow here. It's a much more stable platform. You've got a little bit more width here on terms of the next percent. It does feel like a much more stable shoe. Certainly the Carbon X comes up trumps when it comes to stability underfoot. So both the Vaporfly Next Percent and the Carbon X were released a little earlier this year. It's a big fanfares and lots of hype. Jim Wormsley wore the Carbon X for that 50 mile attempt and he smashed it, didn't he? He did exceptionally well. And of course, Kipchoge ran a very brisk two hours, two minutes and 38 seconds in that London Marathon. I think it was the second fastest of all time. I think I might be right. 
Now it's just going off the top of my head. But he certainly showed that these things can move. So certainly shoes that the elites favour, but which of them really is the best for us mere mortals? Those of us seeking those miles after work, waking before the sunrise to get those miles and training sessions in before the kids wake up. Lunch hours, sacrifice to get in those 5Ks. So this winner of a shoe retails at around about 160 pounds. That's English sterling. To me, this represents great value. The shoe's very versatile. It's able to handle lots of different training activities and paces. It's accommodating for an array of different foot shapes and widths, and it's fast and light enough for a possible race selection. As you can see with the stats on the screen, in terms of weight, there's not really an awful lot in it between these shoes. I mean, yes, you can times up weight difference by two or whatever for the two shoes, but there's not much in it. Nike have stuffed some more Pebax material, well, it's Zoom X basically, it's a type of material called P or Pebax. Pebax, Pebax. They've stuffed about 15% more of it into this shoe than the previous iteration, the 4%. That Pebax material, by the way, it does feature in other manufacturers' shoes. I think Reebok have used it, so it's not just exclusive to Nike. Having worn both of these shoes over a number of runs, I've built up some experience and some opinions on both of these races. It's very clear that the Carbon X has got a slightly different approach in terms of the use of the carbon plate. It does split off into a fork. So one edge of the fork going towards your toe and the other going towards the smaller toes on your foot. I think it's so it guides your big toe to being the main point of push off through the gait cycle. I think Hoka have really aimed this shoe at a much wider audience. I think perhaps more people can experience the benefits of the carbon plate introduction to the midsole than perhaps the Vaporfly series. These do feel really great as you push the pace up sub six minutes per mile. That side, they still feel good at lower paces, perhaps for recovery and easier miles. I think perhaps if you're of a lower budget, then the Carbon X could be a great purchase for you. It can be used for a variety of different training, but also for racing. That side, the next percent does seem to be used quite extensively within training by those superhuman NN team runners. Kipchoge and his super fast bunch of people who have been training for that INEOS challenge appear to be using these things on an almost daily basis. They seem to be appearing across social media more and more often. People appear to be using them for training far more than they ever did the 4% or Flyknit version. Obviously the next percent has some significant changes to its construction. Certainly the midsole and outsole are vastly different to that of the 4% Flyknit, which came before it. Here's my beautiful pair of crimson 4% Flyknit. As you can see, seen a little bit of action, but in fairness, the foam on the outsole is still looking pretty good. I know Kafuzi's posted a video only earlier on today where he's had some issues here with the with the bubbling issue. I'm not entirely sure what's happened there. Maybe, I don't know, it just seems real odd. He's also got some weird sounds kind of coming from that area. Certainly, I am started to experience some weird noises coming from the bottom of my shoe. I'm not sure where they're coming from. Creatures inside the shoe, possibly. Aliens invading aliens, communicating with me from the sh with the shoe. Aliens, come on, get it together, get it together, get it together, man. This particular shoe has about 160 miles in it now. I've been using it for some higher tempo training sessions. Kind of felt a bit sad leaving it in the box. You know, it's such a beautiful thing. What a beautiful shoe. Good memories. Good memories this shoe brings me. Running up a ginormous hill at the Wellington Monument race back in December of 2018. And then running down the hill from the Wellington Monument. That was, that was horrific. I did get a bottle of cider out of it though, so it could have been worse. We're back. You're back with me, yeah? Okay. I mean, the outsole here, it's mainly been used on tarmac and concrete. It hasn't really seen much action in terms of compacted dirt and such, but it's still held up relatively well. Viewers and friends have commented that they have better durability thus far using the Vaporfly Next Percent. This is very encouraging and certainly points to this version of the shoe being a much more usable iteration. Doesn't feel perhaps if you have to baby the shoe quite so much as you did with the 4%. I think it's only about 20 miles on mine thus far, but it's really holding up very well. Very little scuffing, maybe a little bit here, but very little degradation of the Zoom X so far. I think if you're a fan of a more conventional fitting running shoe, 
then the Carbon X is probably going to suit you better. But with this, I've really had no issues in terms of the fit. It really does fit like a glove. It's got some innovations, yes, that some may find unnatural. The heel kind of area is very odd with this padded section here. It's actually quite rigid here at the back in terms of that heel counter. Obviously the lacing speaks for itself, but remember what the Emperor said in Star Wars Episode 3. This thing does have some attributes that some may find unnatural. I'm not like saying you're going to go to the dark side if you if you wear this shoe. That's, that's not going to happen. Clearly Nike feel that the changes in this design present some real innovation. There's real progression there within the design from the 4% to the next percent. But I think it's important to remember that innovation and progress don't always make for lasting impact. Take the design of the Fender Stratocaster or Telecaster, for example. Those are iconic designs that people still love today, even after 50 years. Imagine running in a shoe that was designed 50 years ago. Can you do that? I think another thing that bothers me is the perceived use of these shoes. I think times people have been quite confused and befuddled with my use of the Pegasus Turbos and even the 4%. I've used them on compacted mud type trails and they work just fine. If it's good enough for the NN running team, then it's definitely good enough for me. So is this luminous beast 80 pounds better than the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X? Of course, it's down to you, the runner. Do you really value that opportunity to eke out that last bit of performance? Shave off that last few seconds? If you do, then yes, it probably is worth 80 pounds more than the Carbon X. Though many people are gonna scoff at that price tag. It is ridiculously high. But for me, I feel it could give me that last push to be able to get me over that half marathon target time that I thought was impossible only a short time ago. Those small advantages do add up. So with hard training, dedication and focus, the next percent could personally help me achieve that goal. We shall see but I'm having lots of fun trying and I'm enjoying the process. And that's what counts, right? Okay, that's all for me for today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this discussion of these three beautiful running shoes. I'm a lucky man, I know that for sure. As usual, thank you for watching, I do appreciate it. Please hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications of when new videos are launched. Comment below, hit the like button, and please share this video with other runners. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you. Right, I'm off for a 5K now. I'm gonna take these bad boys with me and see what we can do today. Catch you soon.